Look at this, so cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight to Telfer Museum's Pulse Art and Technology Festival. I'm Harry DeLorme. I'm the Senior Curator of Education. And uh, I'm sort of the, uh, I don't know what you would call me, the, I don't know if I'm the resident mad scientist or the resident crazy person, but uh, I'm the one who puts this together. And um, I want to thank you all for coming out for our 13th edition of the Pulse Art and Technology Festival. Uh, we had, uh, yeah, hard to believe it's been going on that long, but we, we started it not long after we opened this building in 2006. In 2007, we had our first edition of Pulse. So uh, as usual, we, we think we have an exciting uh, few days ahead that are planned, and we'd love to see you um, come to many of these programs. Tonight, of course, we have the opening of our featured exhibition, Keita Takahashi Zooming Out, the first ever museum survey of the work of a visionary video game designer and director, and a showcase um, out in the atrium that uh, hopefully some of you have seen or you'll check out later tonight of games made by local developers. We really wanted to highlight um, what's going on locally as well. So there's some interesting and really quirky games going on out there. Um, we have uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of great folks here with us tonight. Um, we have uh, also, Dr. Clement Shimizu here in the front, front row, and he's, uh, he's the force behind uh, building out 3D Pac-Man, which is now open uh, back there. Um, so, and he's worked with Cato on that. Uh, we have uh, Brandon Boyer here, who has also worked on the game uh, Tenya Wanya Teens, another collaborative project, which you'll also see back in our education spaces. Um, there are a lot of folks who helped out in various ways with this exhibition, and I just wanted to briefly mention our exhibitions team who did such a great job, Heath Rich, Malutin Pavlovich, and Jessica, Jessica Estes, along with Rachel Steyer from our education department, uh, and Josephine Leong from SCAD, who uh, worked diligently. <laughs> who worked diligently to make these massive controller tables that you'll see back in the exhibit. This is a new thing for us, building these custom controller tables, and I think they turned out really well. And uh, of course, Keita uh, designed uh, the graphics that you see on both of those and really came up with the concept of both of those tables. Um, so a lot of great folks um, helped out with this. Our marketing and PR department uh, helped us with graphics and making video and so many other things. So very quickly, what I'd like to do before we launch into tonight's, tonight's program, I um, just wanted to mention, please pick up uh, a Pulse uh, uh, brochure that's up at the front desk. Um, that'll tell you about all the other things that are happening this week and through the weekend. Um, we've got some great programs coming up. Um, throughout the week, um, for example, uh, the next two mornings, we're going to be doing uh, uh, panel discussions for students. And this is for students ages uh, or grades four and up. And one of the big uh, things that we try to do um, with Pulse is to encourage STEM and STEAM education and to get kids thinking creatively about using technology, not just consuming it. And so that's a really big part of what we do. So tomorrow morning, um, Keita Takahashi and Clement Shimizu will be doing uh, a discussion with students. And on Friday morning, we'll have another great discussion with uh, Chris Nussbaum from Gulfstream, who works on flight simulators, uh, Christine Wachta from SCAD, who uh, works in geo design, and Suan Fu from the uh, game design program at SCAD. So we've got some great speakers um, that hopefully will be, be a very inspiring program for young people. Tomorrow night at 6, we have a free event, a round of lightning talks, five-minute presentations by a number of local game developers. So if you're interested in seeing what's going on sort of the local um, game development community, um, please come tomorrow night. That's a free event tomorrow night. Friday night at 6 p.m., we're doing another free event, which is called Designing the Future with our, our partner, W Projects. We'll be showing um, a number of uh, documentaries created by Vice and Secret Media that deal with technology, creative uh, applications of technology and engineering. And uh, all kinds of other great stuff. Um, I wanted to um, also point out we have projections each night this year by John Collette. Uh, and they're going to be really spectacular. So you'll see those when you leave the uh, auditorium tonight. I wanted to give a special shout out to our longtime Pulse artist, the Meteology Collective. They were originally on the program tonight, and we tried, but uh, logistically we were, weren't able to make the piece work for this time. But we are going to postpone that and do that um, installation at a later date. And then uh, let's see, what else have we got? Saturday, we've got a Chatham County Free Family Day from 1 to 4 PM. And uh, local demonstrations from students from local schools, like the STEM Academy and the STEAM uh, program at HERD. And then we have uh, a performance at 3 p.m. by That One Guy. And if you know, don't know That One Guy, just look him up. Uh, just look him up. OK. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of it for, for the, uh, all of that. And you can learn more by look, picking up one of the brochures. So on to tonight's program. Let's see. Oh, before I do that, very quickly, we have a lot of great sponsors this year. 
Um, we have great sponsors for the Pulse Festival. Savannah, the city of Savannah provides investment for this program and many others we do. Infinity, our media sponsor, Connect, uh, and many others have helped sponsor Pulse over time. Um, uh, also, the exhibition, uh, the Keita Takahashi exhibition, had some great support from uh, around the country uh, and around the world, actually. Uh, we have uh, I Am 8 Bit, um, which is a gallery and uh, uh, shop in uh, Los Angeles that's provided a major support for the exhibition. Uh, Bandai uh, Namco Entertainment, uh, Phenomena and Annapurna Interactive um, gave permission for us to show the games that you'll see in the exhibition. And the Illuminati uh, loaned us a wonderful uh, projector for 3D Pac-Man, which made that possible. So we have a lot of great sponsors, and I'd like to thank them all really quick. Uh, and uh, we're going to move on ahead to, to the uh, subject of tonight's program. Um, I wanted to mention, too, that after the program tonight, um, we actually have some, some uh, merch <laughs> related to the show. So um, there's actually a brand new book about Keita Takahashi's uh, best-known game, Katamari Damacy, and that's available in our store tonight. Uh, we also have custom-designed Keita Takahashi t-shirts for Nobi Nobi Boy and uh, Katamari, uh, and you won't find those anywhere else, literally, right now. And uh, we got a gracious donation from Panic Inc. of these t-shirts. So, that's the support of the show. So you can pick up one of those tonight, too, if you like to. So uh, anyway, with all that out of the way, um, let me talk a little bit about the, uh, our featured speaker tonight, our guest tonight. Uh, Kaden Takahashi may not agree with this, um, but uh, he is uh, actually sort of a legend. Uh, he is an unconventional figure who has created some of the most original video games ever made and influenced not just games, but popular culture and visual arts, fine arts. And he, uh, he actually uh, started making art at a very early age. He attended uh, what were called cram schools in art um, uh, as a young, a young student, uh, and, then event, and then entered Mushishino Art University in Tokyo in 1995, and he graduated with a degree in sculpture and visual arts in 1999. After college, he applied for jobs as an artist with major video game companies like Nintendo and Namco, and was hired uh, by Namco as a visual artist. Thanks to his sheer perseverance, stubbornness, uh, a champion at the company uh, uh, and an experimental program you'll hear more about later, um, he was able to sort of sidestep the hierarchy in the video game industry and actually get this amazing game made, Katamari Damacy, which was released for PS2 and became a sleeper hit in the US in 2004. Uh, Katamari Damacy has gone on to, uh, to attain many awards, including uh, the fact that, well, it was, it was named one of the top 10 video games of the year by Time Magazine when it came out. But later in 2012, it was one of the first group of games acquired for the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And 2012 was really kind of a turning point. That's really when games started to get this sort of recognition in museums that you hadn't really seen before. You had the Smithsonian organizing a big traveling video game exhibition, and then MoMA acquiring um, those games. So that was really kind of a, a turning point, and, and uh, Katamari was, was selected as one of those first games. So in addition to Katamari Damacy, uh, uh, Keta Takahashi has uh, been the director for many other games, including uh, We Love Katamari, released in 2005, Nobi Nobi Boy, released for PS3 in 2009, and for iOS later. Uh, and then after leaving Namco, he created the company Uvula with his wife, composer and musician Asuka Sakai, who has scored many of his games. And you'll hear some of uh, her scores in the games that you, you'll see tonight. He relocated from Japan to Vancouver to work on the online games Glitch, and then later started working with independent game developers and festivals to create games like Tenyuanya Teens, Alphabet, um, which you'll see in the installation tonight. Uh, and then in 2013, he joined the company Phenomena in, Sa in San Francisco, where he made the augmented reality game World, and where he is going to, where he's working on his current, uh, current project, a game to be released this year called Watam, which you can actually demo out there tonight. Um, he also had his first drawing exhibition last year, first solo drawing exhibition called the Never Ever Quest at IMX Gallery in Los Angeles. Uh, so he's, he's done all of these things in the game world, and he's also had kind of toehold in the gallery and art world as well. Um, so I, I think his path is an interesting one and one that we can explore further tonight. Before I bring him up on stage, though, I'd like to show you a trailer for his best known game, which uh, most of you are probably familiar with Katamari Damacy, but if you're not, this will give you just a little taste of it before we start our conversation. So, if we could have the video, that would be great.
With that, please welcome Kira Takahashi. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> oh, 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 hey, thank you. Thank you for coming. Oops. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Well, actually, I've got a lot of questions for you. We won't get, them, get to them all tonight. Um, but uh, how are you feeling about the, uh, about the exhibition? Uh, you know, it's very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, that, but I need to be here, so. Yeah, well, we're, <laughs> well, we're, glad, we're glad you're here. <laughs> so um, we're just going to go through a few questions tonight with a few, you know, get into a little bit of, of, your, of your path to kind of what you're doing now and some of the things that have happened along the way. Yes. And kind of, you know, at the beginning, I know, you know, you had an unusual path becoming a game director and design, designer uh, at all, much less the director of one of this really iconic uh, game. Uh, where did this start and what kind of games did you like as a kid? You, know, you I know you played video games as a kid. Yeah, I, I was just very ordinary, natural, fat born boy. <laughs> I was like a bot. <laughs> so, you know, I just like, I prefer play like, inside rather than outside because of my body. <laughs> so, so you maybe play too many video games at that point? Or? Yes, but at, at uh, my friend's house, yeah. you know, the, my parents didn't agree to buy any console. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so the first. So I, you didn't have a game actually, a game console in your house. You had to go to a friend's house to play. Yeah, the first. And later, maybe two or three years ago, from when the first Famicom, like a NES, yeah. <laughs> released. Yeah. Cool. And also art. He started out making art when you were a kid too, right? And yeah, because I was fat. <laughs> so like, uh, I, I didn't like the exercising, the, uh, I prefer to do painting or make yeah. something, or play with clay or something like that. Yeah. Now you, as you seem like making things from a very early age. And did you know you wanted to go study art in college? Or? No, of course no. not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you wound up in art college. I mean, you actually kind of prepared and went through these, these extra programs to, to learn art so that you could apply to art university? Yeah, kind of, because yeah, the making something or painting, it just um, was only what I can do, only what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. So I tried to go art college, but I failed. <laughs> <laughs> and then next year, try again, then yay. You got in, yeah. Cool. So. Um, so you started. You you went to art college to learn different art forms, but you really concentrated in sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there a reason sculpture stood out to you, or that you, you just like making physical things? Like a, I, at the first, I tried to be like a designer, like a graphic designer, mm -hmm. or 
something like that because that looks cool yeah. <laughs> and like very fashion. But it's kind of boring for me. <laughs> <laughs> like just changing the color, the painting on the paper. I much prefer to like having the clay, like an object then. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. Yeah. The making the 3D object is much better for me. So you, you made a variety of objects. We have some of them on the screen right now. These are from uh, some of your early portfolios for Musashino Art University, which are, we have a couple of them up in the gallery upstairs, actually. I should point out that this show is actually split between two floors. So the show starts upstairs on our third floor in the Lewis Gallery with these uh, early pieces and then continues on with the later games uh, downstairs. So make sure you see both floors tonight. So these are upstairs, and these show uh, some of the sculptures that you made in the mid-late 90s, I guess, when you were in art school. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the things that, that uh, stands out about these, these pieces is that already they have this kind of sense of humor to them. And uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about how that came about. Um, I've got the next slide here that has uh, the goat. And uh, I don't know if you want to tell the goat story, but uh, you know how, what that kind of changed your thinking about making art that piece. Yeah. Uh, so before I entered the art college, I like to make a sculpture, but I already knew it would be hard to get a job <laughs> as a sculpt sculpture. Though. Sculptor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, not even in the so there's a subject like a, before enter the art college like draw this one, draw this one. Mm -hmm. Then we do practice. Then making a better, uh, getting better for drawing or mm -hmm. something. But we. Need, we will need to make something what we want, like without any subject or object. We can make freely. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, what should I make? What should I want to make? <laughs> I was thinking that before I entered the art college. Before you, before you got to art <laughs> college, what you were going to make? Even I didn't pass the exam. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, finally, I went to the art college. Then, yeah, the making the sculpture like, is fun. But one day, I saw the, I didn't have any friends at the art college. <laughs> <laughs> but the, some people who is on uh, same, same my class, mm -hmm. they throw out, uh, throw away what they make, what they made in the school. They threw them in like a dumpster, I think, or something? Yes, or, yeah. yeah. I really got shocked about that. And then like I why they would throw their art away? Yeah, even it's a student's dumb yeah. thing. Then I just thought, oh, I should not do that. And then what should I make? So. And then I just realized, realized, oh, maybe I should make something have functional thing, like a two. Functional objects, yeah. Yeah, and then this gold shape flower pot is the first thing I made. And then, so this one, you can put the soil on flower on the back, on the gold, mm -hmm. and then giving the water, the drain, the water from the boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so the water, dra the very, the water drains yeah, out through the goat's udders. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's very functional. Yeah. No, no humor, <laughs> just, just what required <laughs> thing. And then I presentation, I did presentation to the other professors and students, and then they laughed. And smiled. Then I just re realized again, oh, maybe that is what I can do. 
and then later, yeah, the addition, the adding the functional is important, but maybe more important thing is adding some humor or makes the people be smile. So, so that's a very important point yeah. at the moment for me. Yeah, and after that point, a lot of your other sculptures really kind of are like that, like the, uh, the hippo there, which is also a tissue dispenser. Uh, <laughs> Uh, or going back, there's uh, uh, this uh, character here who's, he's sort of loosely based on Astro Boy, is that correct? The, uh, yeah, the, kind of. But he also has this sort of built-in compartment uh, in his chest. Accessory case. So it's like, a, yeah, like an accessory case, but it's also this kind of... Huge, big. Yeah. Yeah, this is about five feet tall. You'll see, you'll see it upstairs. And this one reminds me, the cart reminds me of some of your games. You have this cart with all of these cogs and wheels inside it and lots of little figures and flowers on top. And uh, this almost looks to me like, like your, your newest game, Watam. It, it has that same feel to it. So I think that's interesting that you, these things have kind of traveled with you as you've made different games. Um, there's another one there, another one of the functional sculptures that's... Uh, yeah, the Transformer. It's a, it's a transforming table, right? It's a yeah. transforming table, but you cannot transform that alone. You, you need a friends. <laughs> <laughs> so I call it like a communication tool. <laughs> yeah. But that's sort of interesting because that too, it's like you're, you're thinking of people have to work cooperatively yeah. to, to, <laughs> to get, get the most out of that piece. So. And you also made uh, stop motion animation and claymation. So we've got uh, some of those running up in the gallery as well. And that's this right here. Um, and uh, animation is something that also maybe kind of, I mean, you're not really an animator, but, uh, but animation seemed like that sort of got you into maybe moving images. Is that, would you say that's yeah, correct? Or? I think, yeah. That is the things after I decided to go to the game industry. So I just thought, oh, I should try to make something like a graphic, mm -hmm. not a 3D thing. <laughs> so I made. So you made the animation? Yeah. So we have a reel of those showing upstairs. And then after college, uh, you, you were hired by Namco. Uh, and uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't so easy actually getting hired, was it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> after. <laughs> after joined Namco, that's the HR person told me, hey, Takashi, to say honest. <laughs> he told me I was failed. You, fail, you failed one of your interviews. Yeah, yeah actually, <laughs> at the executive interview. <laughs> yeah. But some of the art manager hired me, and then he explain to the executive how much I have potential <laughs> to make a, like a new video game. So, so, you were, and so you were hired really as, a, as an artist who would draw out concepts, yeah. maybe working with people, other people who were designing games, but you were actually just assigned to draw. Mm -hmm. uh, and while you were, while you were drawing on a, uh, and working on another kind of prototype game, it was a driving game, uh, you, this is where you got the idea for Katamari. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe some of the images there, you kind of see a little sense of that. Could you talk about that original game, what that was like that you were uh, drawing, making the drawings for? So the boss, the person who saved me, <laughs> still trusts my kind of, I'm not sure, that perspective or idea. So. He didn't put me to the commercial project. Mm -hmm. He put me like a very small prototyping project first to learn how to make a video game with other people, like an engineer or designer and music designer too. So I have learned a lot of things from that experience. And then I think I did two or three 
small project. And that, that's, uh, and then other friends who entered the Namco at the same time, they already releasing the game, but I'm not. Yeah. So my boss get worried about my career. <laughs> <laughs> So he told me, hey, Takashi-kun, you should be serious about my idea. Like, uh, he, he also got bored about the game industry or what the Namco was making. And then, OK, so this one? <laughs> so yeah, this is, so this is uh, where kind of the characters of the king and uh, the prints uh, turn up in this driving game originally. Yeah, right? so this is the last, this is the project what I joined uh, at the very end, like right before I started making the Katamari. So this is a project about Action Drive. The other designer want to make uh, the game that you are the drive, but you can drive very freely mm -hmm. anywhere you want. So the game needs something, the story. You can go anywhere without any excuse. Yeah. So I just thought maybe it's funny if the alien king. Yeah. Uh, so the alien king's wife had kidnapping from the. She was kidnapped or? Yeah, kidnapped from the human being. Then the king told his super small, super <laughs> yeah. small son, the prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah prince. Uh, the son, hammer, he hammer shaped head. Yeah. And then, yeah. So he has to knock the driver, uh -huh. knock the driver out. Yes. <laughs> and then over here, uh -huh. I don't know if y'all can see this right here. Yes. Then huck. So he hacks the driver, he sticks a steering wheel in the driver's head, and then uh -huh. starts driving. You know, so it's, this was, the game was called Action Drive, or the concept was called Action uh, Drive. Uh -huh. But this project was, of course, it's canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh -huh. But I really liked the, these characters. Mm -hmm. So when I got the idea of the Katamari, then I just realized, oh, <laughs> it's a perfect because the prince is super small. Yeah. The king is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I can just can mix mix up. Make then. another game with that with the same characters. Yeah. yeah. That and I think you were I think you were, I think you told me you were walking maybe like from a train station or to a train station and you started thinking uh, about yeah. the idea of the katamari spinning. So there are many people ask me, how I get this idea? How do I get this idea? But there's nothing fancy story. I just keep thinking about what, what the things the video, video game can do. What, what's the privilege only video game can do? I just keep thinking about that and then night when I just go back to the station. Then I just got the image in my brain that sinks very, uh, spinning very fast. <laughs> and then when I got the station, the object spinning is start moving. And then in the train, <laughs> the object roll up something, and then it's getting bigger. Then, yeah, when I got the home, like, <laughs> like this, oh. You had, this, oh, you had the idea. Of, yeah, this the, might be of, the game. Yeah. And then the tomorrow, uh, next day. I was not the designer, so I didn't know how to make a video game. Because I know, I know, of course. So I asked my friend who is a designer. Then I told him about my idea. Then he said, yes, hey, <laughs> that is a game. That's a great. So I told 
my idea to the boss. Then he also, he likes it. Then, yeah, okay, so we started how to get green light about of this game from the Namco. So. And then, yeah, and then so, and, and then it went through this sort of unusual process where mm -hmm. uh, you had this kind of team that was sort of pulled together. There was, Namco had a, a student program called Digital Hollywood. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, so part of the way that the game got made was that these students were assigned to create objects. They, had, they were learning about game design. They learned to create objects that would be rolled up by the Katamari. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with that, you had a few engineers working on the project uh, and designers, and you put together a, a prototype. And, and the, uh, the executives liked it, right? Did they? I think so, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't arrow to us make Katamari in the, like a Namco HQ. <laughs> yeah. I, we need to use outsource company. So you didn't make it in Tokyo, you, you went? Yeah. The outsource company is at the Osaka. Maybe you, don't, you guys don't know about that. But as a, and this is a, my first commercial game as a designer, also as a kind of artist. So usually when use the outsource company, the HQ, the people who is at the HQ, just giving the message or email. But I didn't have any confidence to make this game with such a kind of remote communication. Yeah. So I moved to the, <laughs> I physically moved to Osaka. To Osaka, yeah. And then I have the desk at the outsource company. <laughs> Definitely, it feels weird. For, uh, for them, but I did. We have here some of the design documents for Katamori, so from the concept yeah. to... So this is also the, another reason. This is a design doc. I never make such a <laughs> detail on the graphic art. The reason why I made this is outsourcing company. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to work with them without any excusing. So I need to make everything be clear before I start making the game. Mm -hmm. So I, all of it had to be spelled out. And, yeah. Yeah. and in terms of like the way the category moves, the way it picks up objects, all of that had to be worked out and yeah. planned out and, and rendered in these documents. <laughs> so I guess everybody knew what they were doing, right? So there's a few more there. We have a few of these kind of stuck to the walls upstairs. We have like vinyl versions of these sticking to the walls upstairs that you can see later on. Sorry, I, I didn't have any time to translate this to English. <laughs> no, no, no worries, no worries. So, so, so then the game uh, is released, uh, uh, it's sort of preview, what, in 2003, released 2004. And, uh, and it was really popular, like when it very first came out in Japan, it was like, like the top selling game, like the week it came out. And, that's what I've read anyway. Maybe you tell me differently. <laughs> I don't remember, but I don't think so. And it, I, well, what I've heard is that it, it was like it was very popular, like the first maybe week or so, and then it kind of trailed off yeah, maybe a, a little bit. Moment. Yeah, and then kind of went down. But maybe two hours, two hours, then, uh, three hours. <laughs> but then people in the U.S. started hearing about this game. Uh, people elsewhere started hearing about this game, and uh, and it got a U.S. release later in 2004. And yeah. And, uh, and apparently, not enough of them were shipped originally because it, it became this, this kind of surprise hit um, that stores didn't stock enough of them. <laughs> oh, really? uh, and they were, I think they were a little hard to get at one point. But, uh, oh. but uh, were you surprised when it did become successful and it started to get awards? E, of course, yes. I mean, I think you knew you had like a really unique idea, and I think a lot of other people did. You know, thought think that this is something different. It's not the same old game. It's not you know your typical, you know, uh, typical of some of the games that were coming out at that time. Yeah, but to say honestly, I <clears throat> I didn't know about game industries thing. Also, I'm not 
sure, but even now, <laughs> <laughs> I even don't know about what the trend or. So um, it's hard to tell. It's kind of surprised, but I was thinking maybe everybody can understand about the Katamari mechanic because it's very easy to understand. Just roll the ball and make it bigger, bigger, bigger. It doesn't need any language. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is kind of simple, but it's also uh, it's packed with all kinds of wonderful details and uh, humor. You know, and the way that the ball rolls up, you saw in the, the video trailer where the, you know, as the catamaran gets bigger, it's rolling up, you know, cats or people or whatever, and they all say something, you know, the person yells or says something, you know, but there's, there's all of this humor built into every little piece of it, which is, I think, really, really interesting. And, and there's always this kind of meta thing going on in, in your games, too, like, you know, even at the beginning of Katamari where you actually roll up part of the Namco logo uh, to start the game. Uh, and we can talk about that more, I guess, as we get into some of the other <laughs> ones. But, uh, but moving on, uh, so Katamori was, was quite successful, um, and, uh, or successful enough that Namco uh, wanted to work on a sequel, and uh, you didn't want to work on a sequel to it originally. Yeah, of course. <laughs> because, because I made the original Katamari, oh, because there was many sequel games. I didn't like that, so I made that. So why I have to make a sequel of the Katamari? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of very twisted. <laughs> but, but it was going to go on without you, probably, if you hadn't made one. So maybe is that why you made one? Or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but then you wound up saying that, uh, I think you wound up saying that there are parts, though, of We Love Katamari that you think are maybe improvements on the original yeah, Katamari yeah, Damasi. Yeah, of course. I forgot which part it got improved, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe some. But I think Im improve like two-player function too. I mean things like that maybe. Or uh -huh. yeah. I'm, I'm particularly fond of the snowman level. Oh, yeah. well, was, wasn't uh, wasn't the original Katamari? Wasn't uh, at one point was built as like a snowball simulator? <laughs> I want to say, but but you actually got to make the snowman collaboratively, or you made two different snowmen, uh, two different snowballs. And become a snowman. Uh -huh. And this photo, I think, is really cool. This is, uh, can you say what's going on there? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like this one. This is a photo for Japanese physical package, jack of the We Love Katamari. The game jacket, yeah. Yeah, game jacket. So I, I really didn't want to make a sequel. So I need to find out, like, a very, what should I say, special gift for me <laughs> <laughs> for the sequel. So I, I realized, oh, the making the weird jacket is the only sequel can do because the original one, maybe some people knew, knew that. And also. Yeah, I saw there were a lot of like really weird, different possible designs for that, <laughs> that yeah. jacket cover. Mm -hmm. Also, the title is We Love Katamari, mm -hmm. so they love Katamari. Yeah. They all Namco employee. So these are all the Namco employees here. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, the, and then the fans become like the characters in the game too. Yeah. So there's that. The concept is perfect match. <laughs> yeah. But surprisingly, the Namco America didn't like this design, unfortunately, <laughs> but I, I understand. <laughs> so in the US version, we need to change the design, but so this is a Japanese version. This is the version. Japanese cover, Exclusive. yeah. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are like four different covers for We Love Katamari and the different, different uh, international uh, versions. And then after uh, the, Katam the two Katamari games, of course, Katamari Damacy has had many, many sequels and variations since then, like 10 or 11 of them. I think by now, but you were only involved in those first two. But you were ready, I think, to move on to something else. And then uh, your last major game for Namco was Nobi Nobi Boy, uh, which, which I think you told me you actually liked the concept maybe better. You said the game might be, you considered it still sort of unfinished, but it's... Uh, it's not sort of, it's unfinished. 
<laughs> that you actually like, maybe like the concept a little bit better? What, what, about, what was it about the concept for Nobi Nobi Board that you, that you liked or you envisioned? Uh, so the customer, I think it's fine game. It's OK game. <laughs> As a game designer, I didn't like to put the timer, like a time limit. But I didn't have any skill to get rid of that limitation to have the sense of the game. So I wanted to make a something new which doesn't have any limitation. But somehow, the player can keep playing with it. It's a pretty forever. Something. Playing forever. Yeah, that's, I remember you saying that about, about it. So Nobi Nobi Boy, in case you guys haven't seen it, uh, the character of Boy uh, can stretch to incredible lengths and around objects and obstacles. And, uh, and in the game, too, there was this meta level where as the players uh, stretched the character of the boy, it was a parallel character of the girl who is out here in outer space uh, in the solar system. And as the, the boy is, as the players were playing the game, that data went to extend the girl's length that she stretched around the solar system. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a really interesting concept. And then, and as she stretched, uh, more gameplay was was unlocked over time. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a really cool concept and something not that you don't see <laughs> in other games. Um, and I think it took like, was it six years yeah. to, actually, to actually for the girl to complete her journey around the solar system and to complete the game. So, uh, so it was just something that players everywhere were contributing to keeping the game going. And so it may not have lasted forever, but it lasted like six years worth of, you know, before everybody could really see the entire game. Which I think is kind of a, which is itself, I think, a really interesting concept. And uh, sadly, it's no longer, no longer available. I think it was just this deal listed earlier this year, maybe. But, uh, but we hope it'll come back. I, mean, I, I've, <laughs> I don't think so. I've enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I forgot to mention Kat Katamari. The original Katamari Damacy was just re-released. Uh, maybe you guys know this. Uh, end of last year, uh, in a remastered form called Katamari Reroll for Steam and for Switch. So. So that's the first one to be remastered, so hopefully more will be on the way eventually. Uh, but I was really excited to see this because I'd never actually played this myself, and I'm looking forward to spending some time with it. No, don't uh, recommend. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> so, um, so you left Namco, and uh, before you left Namco, you started kind of getting involved with other projects. I think you went to a game festival in the UK in Nottingham, and you were asked by the folks there to maybe come up with some ideas for a playground. So that was kind of like a new, I mean, you've already, you know, you have worked as a, sculpt, as a sculptor. Um, your games have this really physical sense with like objects, like real, real world objects that are somehow used in, a, in very strange ways. Mm -hmm. um, so did, did you see this as kind of like a continuation of yeah. sculpture or uh, yeah. maybe possibly designing these? And uh, of course, and even though these did not get built, I mean, some of them, Look quite dangerous, actually. But, uh, <laughs> uh, they're still really, they're still really fun. And I really, I thought it was really cool that you had, uh, yeah, you, like you envision like the whole family and even like the dog, participating in some of these. Uh huh. Uh, so in the interview I got, I told the interviewer asked me what's the, what's the thing, I want to make besides video game. Then I said, oh, I want to design playground, blah, 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 blah. Then the, the he asked me, why don't you try to make an actual playground? Then I said, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then I go to the Nottingham in the UK, then start designing the playground. When I start the playground, I didn't have any kids, <laughs> <laughs> but now I have two, so maybe if I <laughs> redesign the playground, maybe the design will be different, <laughs> but I, I still believe my <laughs> sense of... I think you still need to do one. You, yeah. I think you really do need to do a playground. So, I think it'd be great. But the concept was the playground is for kids. That's not great. 
the usually the parents just bored. They were watching the phone, yeah. uh, talking with the other parents. Why? <laughs> because the playground is designed for the kids, but why? Why not for the everyone, include a pet, like a dog or cat? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just wanted to try to make the playground. Some, something that everybody could participate in. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> no, these are beautiful. We have we have uh, one of these original sketchbooks in the exhibition as well, and some other others reproduced, and we want to put some more up that we don't have up right now. So we'll be adding to that, I think. Um, and then, uh, so you, you left Namco, and uh, you originally, you relocated to Vancouver to work on uh, Glitch for a little while. And then, from, and then also you started working in the early 2010s on uh, independent games, uh, some of them for festivals. So uh, Tenyawanya Teens was one of those, uh, which is, you guys have to play it. It's, a, it's really completely hilarious and awkward game. And, uh, that, which has two uh, teenage boys as the protagonist. And this was made as a collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about your collaboration, uh, how some of these came about? Well, this one in particular, maybe, just to start off with. Yeah, but the collaboration. Uh, so when I was at the Namco, I need to make kind of double A or A title game as a consuming game. A consumer game for a wide release. Yeah. yeah. But, so I didn't have any chance to make a, any small game with a small idea. But after I left the Namco, oh, I just realized I can make that small game, yeah. which is very good for me, like a, as a kind of relaxing. <laughs> then I forgot that maybe the brand asked me to make a video game for the party. Then the idea came from the fighting game. You know, the fighting game has a lot of like a combo by like a down, down, up, up, A, B, A, B, something like that. Yeah. But I thought, oh, maybe you don't need a combo, but just having the bottom. <laughs> So I pressed the 16 buttons. The each oh. single button has a different skill. I think I have a maybe I have a slide of that. I may have to come back to I'll come back to Alphabet. But yeah, there's the game controller table there. This we this is when we were setting it up about a mm -hmm. week ago. Then the buttons function is changing by time. So if but so these are. Object like a toilet, you need to be the P, but sometimes you like confess or sleep or get shower <laughs> in front of the toilet. Um. So, yeah, I think that's interesting that the color there are colors associated with different actions in the game, but the colors on the buttons don't stay in the same place, they move around. So, you mm -hmm. can't avoid doing something awkward, mm -hmm. you know, like peeing in front of. A girl you're trying to confess your love for, you know, mm -hmm. so um, so it becomes this kind of. I guess it's like it's about teenage awkwardness, a kind of. Yeah, like a, you know the teen doing wrong thing at wrong place at the wrong timing. Yeah, <laughs> that's the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I saw like, like a yeah. Uh, so the our life has a has a gaming element everywhere. That everything can be the game. Yeah. So that is a kind of mild concept. In the same way, the letters of the alphabet can become a game. So this piece, which was made with uh, Adam Saltzman, was kind of a smaller game. Uh, yeah, more smaller game. This is just like a... I just wanted to make a video game with randomly control, but you can play. Like a, you don't need to know how to control the game. Yeah. Just press the keyboard, that's it. So all of the letters of the alphabet are, are characters that can move in the game. Mm -hmm. and So the game is technically for, for 1 to 26 players. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> M MMO. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, uh, and it's been, it's shown, in, uh, well, Tenuanyu Teens has been shown in different settings, you know, in different, different venues, uh, most recently at the uh, Museum of Pop Culture, I think, in Seattle. And then uh, Alphabet um, has been shown in a lot of venues as well, including the Toronto International Film Festival's uh, Digi Play Space. And uh, their controller was a little different, a little smaller. I think for this one, you wanted to go, wanted to go bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see there, this is a, a drawing that Kata sent me earlier, uh, saying this is, this is kind of like the first concept for it. And then I think you decided you wanted like the big buttons, the jumbo buttons. So the table then became like nine feet long. Uh, <laughs> so then we kind of, we, well, no, actually more than that. It was going to be like 12 feet long. So anyway, we, we decided to, push it together so we have two rows of buttons. So now it's, now it's just like you know, six or seven feet long. Um, so you can play that up there too. And so you really need like two or three people to actually play the game successfully because it's hard to reach it all. But I think that's kind of what you wanted, right? Is mm -hmm. <laughs> 3D Pac-Man was another one of these collaborations. It was kind of like a, a, a very short, um, project. Uh, you were asked by Baby Castles to mm -hmm. uh, come to New York and speak at uh, their summit at the Museum of Art and Design, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked you to um, to redesign or rethink maybe some kind of classic games. Yeah. And so, uh, what were some of the other ones that? Uh, so we have Pac-Man here. Kind of your take on what Pac could be done with Pac-Man. Um, side scroll shooting. Which... So a side scroller. Yeah. Shooting game and. Actually, I forgot. <laughs> Mario Ball? Yeah, Mario Ball was one Mario. of them. And, uh, yeah, there, so there were like maybe five of them that were made for installations. So these are made for physical installations. And, uh, and Clement Shimizu is here, actually created this. He mapped this out to make it a full room immersive installation, uh, which was shown briefly at, at uh, the Baby Castle Summit and then also briefly here in Savannah in 2013, which is when you first came here and sort of when we started kind of, when I started kind of thinking, well, okay, maybe we should do something, do something more. Um, and we have it actually running up there tonight, and uh, Clement has actually made, it, uh, made some changes to it, so you can play it, uh, it actually extends to the floor, and you can uh, play in a multiplayer mode as well, so. So uh, in 2013, you moved to, uh, I think it was 2013, you moved to San Francisco around then, uh, and uh, working with Phenomena, uh, and uh, you were already thinking about Watam at the time, but you made this game, maybe the Made World, which is your first augmented reality game. How did this project come about? Can you talk about that very briefly? And very briefly? Yeah, we're, we're kind of running low on time, so or we could uh, skip to Watam if you want to. Yeah, uh, so I moved to San Francisco for making the Watam with Sony, like I see, but that we started making the game, but unfortunately uh, we got cancer from the Sony. But that the uh, easily we showed the Watan demo build. The some Google people look at the game. They they had interest about me or them. Yeah. Then they ask can you make a game to uh, by using their augmented reality technology? So why I got consideration? <laughs> why don't we just make a AR game for Google yeah. device? Then I started to make this one while waiting for the next step of the button. Mm -hmm. And so this game, World, is played uh, on a uh, on the now, uh, a device is now discontinued, the Google Tango devices. So we have some up there in the galleries that you can try out. Um, but you can interact with, with an environment and uh, uh, add objects to it or characters to it and then unlock more as you go along. And there's a sandbox mode after you get into it for a while. Um, well, Tom is the current project. And uh, you said that this came out of your experience of, or I read in an interview, I should say, that this came out of an experience, uh, your experience of being in Vancouver, kind of moving there and sort of being around people from a lot of different places. Uh, is, that, is that kind of where the, this yeah. kind of concept came from? Yeah. So I'm a Japanese people. You know, in the Japan, 
there's so many Japanese people, of course. <laughs> 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 they only speak Japanese, of course. But when I moved to Vancouver, there are so many different race of the people use English as a tool to like to make something done, like uh, working together, blah, 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 blah. That's kind of very impressed for me. Even they speak different language, but they use the English as a tool. But at the same time, uh, you know, the, we are so different, different skin color, different religion, different language, mm -hmm. different like a thoughts, perspective, that make um, so many conflictions, like a war, there's the war in the world. But, so that is a kind of, kind of downside of the difference. But if everyone are the same person and same thoughts, if everyone is the same, that must be the boring and the kind of dead. <laughs> That's not great. So I wanted to make the video game about how to get the differences feels joyful. Um, so this is the game. <laughs> so you have the character, the mayor here, who starts off very sort of lonely and depressed. Mm -hmm. and, and gradually he uncovers friends in places he doesn't expect to find them. And he has to engage with them. And then as more friends accumulate, they can kind of join together and have these kind of joyful like mm -hmm. explosions. And uh, so this one also has kind of an interesting, you have these interesting game mechanics in, in almost all of your projects. But this one, that seems to be kind of like, like the signature sort of uh, you know, activity that, that comes from the game. But it's, uh, but it's also about making friends. It's something that, you know, there seems to be, that, like, that may be, whereas Katamari, there's kind of like this sub-theme of mass consumption. In this game, it's really kind of about maybe getting over differences or kind of just joining together to have fun. Is that sort of? Uh, I still don't have any friends <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the actual world, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about the friendship or, but yeah, this one. Or maybe coming together despite differences, is that mm -hmm. kind of? Also, in this game, the, each single people speak different language. Like in the spring world, we, they speak English, but the other world, they speak Korean or Russian or Japanese. So, but they don't understand each other at the first time. But after get explosion, then with joy, then they can communicate. Yeah. <laughs> Even the language barrier. That's kind of. That's good enough. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, um, and then uh, in addition to what Tom, so what Tom is is maybe coming out sometime this year. I know you've been working on it a while, but we'll. <laughs> We'll hope it comes out uh, before too long. Uh, the, uh, the next uh, thing I wanted to show really quick is the Never Ever Quest. This was your first solo drawing exhibition. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a really, uh, I mean, they're really beautiful little drawings. I mean, I, I just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, you've been doing drawing exhibitions. You've shown your work in museums. Do you consider yourself an artist at all or no? <laughs> No, this is just a hobby. <laughs> just your hobby, OK. So um, do you think of yourself more as a designer than as an artist? Or do you think of yourself as both, maybe? I, I don't know. To say honestly, I don't care about the money. Oh, you don't title. care about the label? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> the drawing from that series. Did you write the little uh, the story that goes with them? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, but I should try, yes. But I didn't have time. Well, there's a little story that goes with each, each yeah. image in the series. Yeah. There are like yeah. 50 drawings that, that make up the series, make up the exhibition. Well, um, one thing I wanted to kind of end with here, I, I really like this. This was uh, 
your acceptance speech for the Trailblazer Award at Indiecade. And I really liked it quite a bit, what you had to say here. Um, and you guys can read it on your own. But um, I like the part, uh, particularly, you know, you said you still believe that video games can be of help maybe to fix our problems. And all the problems we have now are fixable somehow. Do you think that video games have potential to help us in our lives or given the state of the world? Depends on us. <laughs> uh, yes. So I, I'm trying to make a video game that gives you some different perspective. You know, if there's an object or a problem, if you can see from that only this direction, it's new, you never solve, but you just change the, your direction or, or perspective. Maybe there's some solution. Like a katamari or nobinobi, the katamari, you just roll. You can roll the object in your world, actual world, that's it. But I just add additional magic. <laughs> the every object attach, they getting bigger, bigger. Yeah. Those kind of thing, like uh, just add some different magic in your mind. Then there may be some hint to solve the problem. If it's yeah, <laughs> that would be great if. He could solve some issues through the video game, but I, I don't know. Well, I think that going back to kind of where you were at the beginning with the sculpture is just saying that, you know, that you're, you want to make things that, that make people smile or that people enjoy playing. And, and maybe, that's, maybe that's enough, or maybe that's enough to maybe change things a little bit, if people can enjoy themselves or if they can laugh a little bit. Would you say that's kind of where you're coming from or not? <laughs> not sure. I don't. <laughs> Basically, I don't trust any people. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, our human beings are not so smart. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes forget, sometimes be lazy, but that is a human being. So, but yeah, I'm definitely positive. Um, optimistic about the video game also ourselves. Well, there's many more questions I'd like to ask you, but we've already run over time. So I wanted yes. to thank you for, thank you for. <laughs>